This is Geometry, Chapter 9, Section 1, in which we will be studying reflections. And we're actually going to be looking at these in a lot more detail than we did earlier in the year. We did this back in 4.7. We talked about reflections some there, but we're going to go into a little bit deeper. So the first thing you need to know is what a reflection in a line is. And that's the kind of reflection we're going to be dealing with, is a line reflection. It's a special kind of function that maps a point to its image, it takes one point and moves it somewhere else with the following rules. If the point that we're working on happens to be on the line for the reflection, then the image is the same place. If it's on the line, it doesn't move. If it's not on the line, then what we find out is our reflecting line is the perpendicular bisector of the segment between the point and its image. Now this is a fancy way of saying what you already know. That the image of a point is the same distance away from the line of reflection, just on the opposite side. And we're going to apply this idea, and we'll start with an actual real-world type problem. So we have our friend Joy who wants to find a spot to set up a table to sell tickets to a dance. And she's got permission from the school to put a table at some point along this wall. She can't put it on this side because that'll get in the way of traffic. But she can put it on this wall. So she wants to find a place to put that so that the path from someone walking from A here to her table to B is as short as we can make it. So we have to find a place somewhere along the wall here to put our table. Well, what we really need to do then is make a reflection of point A across this line that represents the wall. Okay. Point A is so and so far away, so the reflection is going to be somewhere over uh, roughly there. Okay, you notice I'm getting out a ruler and measuring very precisely. Then what we want to do is connect B with that reflected point for A. And the wall, or the uh, table, goes on the point where our new segment intersects the wall. So this point is point P, this point on this segment that we just made. That's point P. That would be the shortest distance somebody could walk to get to the table and then go to B. First reflect your starting point, then connect it to your ending point and find where it crosses the reflection line. Okay. Our next job is to draw the reflection for various figures and again, I'm going to be very precise and I'm going to get out a ruler and measure everything. You can tell that's not about to happen. What we're going to do is look for places where we can make segments. Okay, And I'm going to erase that segment in a second. But I've picked something to go perpendicular to the reflection line and about the same distance across there and I'm going to put a new point I'm going to put a new point right on where that segment was and I'm going to do the same thing with H I'm not going to actually draw the segment this time I just did it the first time to give you an idea of what it looked like I'm going to do the same thing with E somewhere in there and F 
somewhere in there. And if I did this really carefully, I'm going to get a shape that looks more or less like the original. Okay. Doesn't have to be perfect for our purposes. If we were going to be building a, a house from it or something, then I would want to be more exact. But otherwise, no, I'm just going to leave it kind of rough. Okay. Let's do the same idea with JKL over here. Right. K will reflect to about here, roughly. L is on the line, so it just stays where it is. J will reflect to oh, somewhere in there. And then it's just connect, connect, and connect. And you should have a, a shape that looks more or less the same. I mean, mine obviously didn't work out too well that time. But as long as you're close, I'm going to go with it doesn't have to be perfect by any means. Now when we do these things in a coordinate plane, then we can be a little more precise. So they've given me some points for a trapezoid. And I'm going to plot those points. Negative 1, 1. 4, 1. 4, negative 1 negative 1, negative 3. And I'm going to connect those up. Those are the original points. That segment did not turn out well, but we'll just draw a new one. Okay. Now we are reflecting in this other line, the line y equals negative 3. Well, that line is right here. That line goes right across here. That's what we want. So now we're going to reflect our points across this line. Our first point is actually on that line, so we leave it alone. The second point is four units away, so it's going to go four units away. This one is two, so it'll go to two. This one is four, so it goes to four. Okay. And then connect, connect, connect. And we should have a trapezoid that's identical to it, just flipped over. Okay. Now, a lot of times people find it easier to use a formula to make the reflections. And if you're one of those kinds of people, I'll, I'll give you these formulas. If you want to just do it like we did the last one and count how far away you are, that's fine. Okay. If we're reflecting in the x-axis, that means we're flipping it across a horizontal line, then the y value changes signs. You're going the same distance away from the horizontal x-axis, just in the opposite direction. So if it was above, it goes below. Similarly, if we're in the y-axis, then we're reflecting across a vertical line that means the x value will change. And then another common one, reflecting in the line y equals x, the two values trade places. So a point 4, 2 would go to a point 2, 4. Okay. Most of the time I won't use the formula for these if I'm doing the problem, but I will for the last one because it's easier to just do that than to try to figure out where to put the point. Okay. We're going to uh, find the values of the new points, the reflected points. I'll leave it to you to plot the graph over here. But we're going to find the values of the new points. We're given four points, W, X, Y, and Z. 
our first point negative 4 negative 1 we're reflecting in the y-axis reflecting in the y-axis means change the sign on the x-axis now you'll notice I have W with an apostrophe here this apostrophe in math is called prime point W gets mapped to W prime which is 4 negative 1 X gets mapped to x prime we're still reflecting in the y-axis so we're changing the x sign so we get negative 2 2 y prime would be negative 3 0 and z prime would be 3 negative 3 again I'm gonna leave it to you to make the graph so you can see what the picture would look like I'm gonna trust you can plot coordinates We're also going to look at the same idea with the x-axis, and again, I'm going to let you plot the points on your own. We have points P, Q, R, and S. If we reflect in the x-axis, that means the y value changes signs. So P goes to P prime, and notice I changed the sign of the y value. Q goes to Q prime. Again, the y value changed, the x stayed the same. R goes to R prime, and S goes to S prime. Okay. In all the cases there, the y value changed sign, the x value stayed alone, stayed as it was. Okay. One more here. We're going to do a reflection in the line y equals x. And this one's a little bit trickier to understand, so I'm going to plot this with you. And the first thing I'm going to do is plot the line y equals x. Okay. It's a diagonal line going through the origin. Looks like that. Now let's find the values of these new points. B, which is at negative 3, 3. becomes 3, negative 3. The two values trade places. C at 1, 4 becomes C prime at 4, 1. And D, negative 2, negative 4, becomes D prime, negative 4, negative 2. Okay. I'm going to plot the original points first. 3, negative 3. There's B. C at 1, 4. D at negative 2, negative 4. Can't believe I just did that. I plotted B prime instead of B. How dare I? Negative 3, 3. There's B. And I'll connect those with a solid line. And you see we have a triangle, which we expected, with three points. Okay. Now we need to plot B prime, C prime, and D prime, and I already plotted B prime. Can't believe you let me get away with that. I know some of you were raising your hand at home saying, hey! But that's okay. Now we've got those plotted and we'll connect them. Okay. And you can see how it's a reflection across this dotted line right here. They're harder to plot if you just try to measure off and measure over. So using the formula is easier in those cases. Okay. As always, if you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down. Bring them in with you and make sure you ask them, and we will see you in class.